Hello, it's Scott Manley here. If you're as much of a fan of aircraft as myself, you'll spend a lot of time looking at them, examining them, figuring out how the aerodynamics people put these things together to satisfy the design requirements. And as you look closer, you start to see interesting details. You wonder, what does that do? There are a number of aircraft which, instead of having a nice, smooth, leading edge to the wing, they have a discontinuity halfway across. It's as if somebody built the plane in Kerbal Space Program and didn't quite align the parts so that there's a shift. But these are actually intentionally there. There are aircraft like the F-18, the F-4 Phantom. Down at my end, you've got things like the Cirrus SR-20 and 22 or the Icon A-5. This whole idea of the wing having a shape which radically changes at one point is there intentionally and it's there to make the plane safer when it flies slower. So, in the aircraft I fly, the Cirrus SR-20, these are called leading edge cuffs. And the, if you actually look in close, it's not just that the front of the wing changes shape, the entire profile of the wing changes shape. So it's like there is two separate chunks of wing put together and that's actually the effect they're going for. So this is designed to improve low speed performance when you are getting close down towards a stall. So in a stall situation, the, as the aircraft slows down, the angle of attack of the wing has to increase slowly. And as you reach the critical angle, the airflow over the top of the wing starts to separate and that's called the critical angle. Once the airflow starts to separate, your wing loses lift, it kept, keeps on getting more drag so it becomes harder to fly. So that's where you get the stall speed of an aircraft, right? It's that where you've reached the maximum angle on the wing and any increase in angle will actually reduce your ability to fly. And when you're doing this, this is one of the things that you do as a private pilot, you practice to fly right up to the slowest speed you can and not lose control of the aircraft. And there's a particular way you can lose control of an aircraft in this situation called a stall spin. A spin is where one wing ends up stalled more than the other. So if you're flying right up close to the limit, one side perhaps starts to stall slightly sooner. Uh, flow separation begins and that wing will start to drop. And there's a natural reaction of pilots to immediately move the stick over to bring the wing back up. But when you are right at the limit of the stall, that is actually gonna make things worse because the ailerons are the little uh, control surfaces out on the wing tips. And when you wanna bring that wing back up, what does it do? It moves the aileron down that would normally lift the wing up. But because you're moving that down, you're gonna exacerbate the flow separation there. So you're actually gonna lose lift you're gonna add drag and the whole plane will start to yaw and roll towards that. And here's me doing this in a pits special, right? This is a plane which really likes to spin. And of course, spin recovery is one of the things you learn. The way you recover from the spin is you use the rudder rather than the ailerons. You put the stick in neutral, you put the rudder in to counteract the rotation. And once you stop rotating, then you adjust the pitch and climb, uh, you know, fly out of it just like you would another stall. So the way you avoid entering the spin, by the way, is you try to keep the aircraft coordinated using the rudders. You try to keep it straight. And there's actually a thing you can do called a falling leaf, where as it starts to go down on one side, you'll put in rudder to bring that side back up and you can sort of flop down like a falling leaf. So anyway, a stall into a spin is potentially very dangerous because while you can recover from it once you realize it's happening, if you are, say, flying low and slow because you're coming in for landing, you do not have enough altitude to recover from this. And there are something like 25% of aviation accidents are a result of a stall spin close to the airfield while you're trying, people are trying to land. So trying to make a wing which doesn't go into a spin has been uh, a topic of much research. And NASA looked at this in the, you know, going right back to the 1930s, but the design that we have on the Cirrus dates to the sort of 1970s. So one idea that's seen in lots of aircraft is that the wing changes its angle as it goes out towards the wingtip, right? So that's called wing washout. The idea is you reduce the angle of attack at the wing tips 
at where the ailerons are so that they continue to fly while the inner edge of the wing will stall. And because the inner edge is stalling, it loses lift and the whole nose will come down and help keep you flying in a straight line. So that's actually in a lot of aircraft. But the idea of having a complete discontinuity between the inner edge and the outer edge, that is a much newer thing that was researched by NASA in the uh, 70s and 80s and finally started appearing on aircraft in the 1990s. So while a smooth wing washout appears to help, the discontinuity actually is much better. And the reason is this discontinuity generates a vortex. You've got high pressure area on one side and it slips over the edge and it forms a little whirlwind. And this comes up over the front of the wing at the cuff zone and it propagates across to the back of the wing. And as it does this, it kind of stops the stall from progressing from the inner edge of the wing to the outer edge of the wing. In technical terms, aerodynamicists will say that the vortex re-energizes the boundary layer. The boundary layer is the area that is close to the surface of the aircraft. And as it goes over the wing, it initially goes from like a high pressure zone to a low pressure zone as it speeds up. But then it has to leave the middle of the wing and it goes from a low pressure to a high pressure. And at that point, it's sort of working against the natural flow. And so if it doesn't have enough energy, it can end up getting separated and pushed away. And that's how you end up with a stall. At least that's how it was explained to me by an aerodynamicist. So anyway, this effect helps confine the stall to the intersection of the wing. When the aircraft hits the limit, it tends to just go nose down instead of dropping one wing rather than the other and transitioning into a spin. You have to go into that a whole lot harder and you'll notice by then because you'll have your stall warning going off. So NASA did a bunch of research on this. They built aircraft, they modified the wings to add this, and uh, they tested going into stalls and they would basically slow right down. They would step hard on the rudder and watch it go into a spin. And when they intentionally went into a spin, they would uh, hit it maybe like 60% of the time with the leading edge, you know, the cuffed wing, they dropped that to about 5%. And that's pretty amazing. It means that the wing is much more safe. And so that's why the FAA, when you know, Cirrus began manufacturing aircraft in the late 1990s, the FAA were actually very interested in saying, hey, you should use these uh, wings that are much safer, that are much more spin resistant. Similarly, the Icon A5, a plane explicitly developed to be the sort of aviation equivalent of a power sports to, you know, toy. It's like a jet ski that flies, something that wasn't pitched at pilots, something that was pitched at your average driver. They spent a long time coming up with a wing design that if the pilot was pulling back on the stick and stalling the thing, it would just drop down rather than going into a spin. So anyway, moving up the performance envelope, we get to the high performance jets like the F-18 and the F-4. These have these discontinuities at the front of the wing. And in all these high performance jets, what you have is a swept wing. The swept wing reduces drag as you go up through the transonic region into supersonics. And that's very important when you're trying to make a high performance plane. A straight wing will have a much more drag along the leading edge. So by angling that, you lose it. But what happens is as the air moves up over the top of the wing, it then tends to get pushed outwards. And as it gets pushed outwards, you'll get flow separation at the very wing tips first. So when a delta wing, a swept wing stalls, it tends to stall out on the wing tips. And if you think about it, the wing tips are further back than the wing roots. So this means you're losing lift at the back. And that means that as you stall, instead of uh, pitching down as you would in something like a Cirrus or you know, GA aircraft, the back of the wing is stalling, so you're pitching up. And this, of course, is the, what led to the infamous saber dance, where they would stall at very low speeds and they would have a hard time getting the nose down, and frequently this transitioned into crashes. So over the years, Aerodynamicists came up with ways to stop this uh, outward, the spanwise flow, which would help, would cause the flow separation. And so one very obvious example of this are the, the MiG-15s. These have these massive wing fences. And so they literally put these fences on top of the wing and it stops the flow going spanwise and reduces the chance of this happening. But in the F-18, the F-4, 
The idea here is, as you go to high angles of attack, this little dog tooth on the wing, it generates a vortex, the vortex runs along the wing, and that stops the spanwise flow from interfering with the wingtips, so you have much better stall characteristics. See, it all makes sense. There are lots of other ways of doing this, by the way. You know, there's you can do it with notches. There are, like, actually adjustable vortex generators that appear on some high-performance planes that when they reach certain configurations, it'll pop out and it can change the geometry and change the type of vortex that's coming off of this to control it during these high angle of attack maneuvers. You'll get things like the leading edge root extension where it's basically a strake that runs right along and this is a vortex generator that generates stuff at the wing root. And you know, in the field of vortex generation, there's a whole lot of stuff that gets done in, in aviation. Like, you'll find random little tiny wings attached to aircraft that are supposed to you know, energize the airflow, generate a vortex, which will adjust the performance. Like, there's ones on the Cirrus just in front of the wing route. But I think the place you're most likely to see them is big passenger jets. Though jet engines, the nacelles, will have these little uh, wings on them, vortex generators, because... What this does is, as the aircraft is taking off and it's moving through the air, those big nacelles are interfering with the airflow over the top of the wing. They're inter you're, they're getting in the way. So these little vortex generators are supposed to generate little whirlwinds of air that will remain attached over the top of the wing and stop you losing lift just as you're rotating out to take off. So look, I am by no means an expert on this, but I find the whole process of learning about this fascinating. Uh, I end up, I fly this Cirrus because uh, it's a pretty safe aircraft, but I equally loved flying the pits because I knew that once I got it into a spin, I could get out of it. But <laughs> yeah, it was a very exciting moment when that happened. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.